All right. So today we are going to start with the error analysis. And what do you mean by error? So it is the difference between the true value and measured value of a quantity. So for an example, let's suppose I measure some quantity, anything. Let's say I measure my height, or let's suppose I measure. Uh, I give this example very often. Length of this pen. Okay. So I take some tape, a meter scale, and I measure length of this. Pain. Then, let's say I measure it for uh, ten times. Okay, so the measured values are L one, L two, okay, so on and so forth, L three, so on and so forth, up to L n. Now, sometimes the measured value will be close to uh, the true value of this quantity. Sometimes there will be slight difference, maybe. Okay. So the that difference between the true value and measured value it is called as error. Okay, so this is very naive example. Now there are certain types of errors. So what are the types of errors? Types of errors are systematic errors, random errors, and least count error. So what do you mean by a systematic error? Systematic error is the error which takes place in one direction only. Okay, so once you come to know about that error, you can try to minimize it. So, for an example, the instrumental error. So, for an example, let's suppose you go to a grocery shop and you ask that uh, okay shopkeeper to give you one kg sugar. And let's suppose his balance is old one, and it's already showing something. Okay, it is imbalanced. All right. So, then there is some error to start with. Okay, that is the instrumental error. Okay, then there can be uh, we can give another example. So, for an example, we take let's say a thermometer, and I want to measure boiling boiling point of the water, and the markings on that thermometer are not correct. Let's say for zero degree Celsius it shows one degree Celsius or something. Then for hundred degree Celsius it will show what one zero one degree Celsius. All right. So these kind of errors are the instrumental error. Okay. Then the next one is imperfect experimental technique or procedure. So let's suppose the person who is taking measurement doesn't know how to take the measure. Okay. His procedure or his technique of performing the measurement is incorrect. So for an example, you might have seen this. You go to Uh, let's say you have fever, and you go to some clinic, okay, and there is a compounder or a helper, and they give you thermometer, and where do they keep it? Yes, sir. Okay, so that is incorrect way of measurement. Okay, so uh, the temperature there it is lesser than the overall temperature of the body. Okay, so correct way to keep the thermometer is under the tongue. and if the compounder or a helper they don't know about this then the measured temperature will be always a little bit lesser than the actual temperature of the body okay so this is the so this can be rectified okay so this can be rectified by training then personal error so what do you mean by personal error so for an example let's consider this example so measuring length of this pen i will keep a tape or a meter scale or here and some people they have tendency to look from this side or this side okay right so they are biased so somebody let's say for an example uh, he will always see from this side okay there might be some other person who has tendency to uh, look at it like this so the measured value will be always shifted compared to what the true value okay the measured reading will be always shifted if you look from right it will be shifted towards left if you look, uh, look at it to, from left hand side it will be shifted toward right so it will be less or more compared uh, compared to what the actual reading okay so this is the personal error okay so all of these can be rectified once you know about them so these errors can be rectified so they always happen in a particular direction okay either positive or negative and they can be rectified either 
by adding let's say adding or subtracting in the zero value okay or teaching a particular technique or uh, yeah so in case of personal errors also teaching the technique okay perfect technique of taking the measurements all right so next one is random errors so now what are random errors so systematic errors are in your hands okay you can rectify them random errors they are not in your hands so for an example you are measuring resistance of a resistor and there are some voltage fluctuations they are not in your hand right so how do you measure the resistance you take voltage reading you take the current reading then you take ratio of that okay so by finding voltage upon current you find out resistance okay but if the voltage is fluctuating then you will get different values of resistance right sometimes may be greater and sometimes lesser than the actual reading so this is the random error it can be sometimes positive sometimes negative okay then uh, another example can be given let's say you are measuring the time period of a pendulum okay so let's say uh, there is some wind so what will happen there is <coughs> there is wind in a particular direction so to go towards one direction it will need more time and to go towards the other direction it will need lesser time right okay so time period will be it will be actually impacted due to this due to the wind okay then so these kind of things can happen voltage can fluctuate there can be wind there can be some temperature changes in your experimental setup and the errors happening because of them they are not in your hand so they are called as random errors you can't do anything about them okay except for taking hundreds of readings if you take more and more number of readings what will happen the error will be minimized okay and the last one is the least count error now what is this so for an example i want to measure let's consider this example again length of this pen okay so let's say this is my pen and i am measuring its length so this is my scale okay so it has got some markings like this now you can see this reading over here okay let's say this is 1 cm 2 cm anything so this reading let's say it corresponds to it corresponds to 15 cm so this is 16 okay and this is 16 point something all right so this is let's say 15.5 so this is 16 this this one is 15.5 so length of this pen is not exactly 15.5 cm it's little bit greater than that now you don't have perfect markings over there so let's say if you have millimeter markings so then there are two markings so it, it is 15.5 okay it is 15.7 and a little bit above than that but you can't find it out because your least count is not sufficient okay it is not sufficiently small you got this so yes no yes sir it is not exactly on the marking it is little bit over the mark okay so you cannot figure it out what is the exact reading it can be let's say 15.7 okay it's between 15.7 and 15.8 so if you take 15.7 this is not correct if you take 15.8 it's also not correct right it's in between them so your reading your measurement is limited by the least count of your measuring device so the error that will creep in in this case is known as the least count error so these are various types of errors so next let's talk about the accuracy and precision so what is accuracy and precision so in our day to day language both means same but in physics they have got different different meanings okay so what is accuracy 
it is the closeness between the true value and measured value of a quantity and what is precision it is the resolution with which you take the measurement all right so let's see what's the difference between them for an example for an example again i measure length of the pen okay you might get bored but that's what comes in my mind okay that's the example that comes in my mind so the reading that i take is let's say 15.7 and suppose length of the pen is 15.72 all right then i take some other device vernier caliper so earlier i took meter scale and i got this reading 15.7 the exact length suppose it is equal to 15.72 okay so this is the this is the true value and this is measured value or this is reading one i will call it l1 okay so this is measured by meter scale now i take vernier caliper and i measure length of the pen and suppose it gives this reading 15.7 okay 75 or uh, 755 all right it will go uh, it will give up to the second digit only okay so yeah but let's suppose i have a device which gives this reading so which one is accurate which one which one of these is accurate 15.7 and which one is more precise 15.75 okay so see in english language precise means accurate okay but here what's the difference so this reading is closer to 15.72 the difference is 0.02 cm only this reading it is more resolved by more resolved meaning i measure i can measure so here i can measure 1/10th of a cm here i can measure 1/1000 of a cm okay so this is more resolved okay resolution is more the device that i am using for taking this measurement it, it can give reading up to more resolution more digits after a decimal point okay but clearly this reading is closer to this one compared to this one okay so now so this is more accurate compared to this one but this is the precision of this reading the second reading is more compared to the first one all right you got the difference between accuracy and precision yes sir okay so this is just to give an example it doesn't mean that more precise device the uh, device which has more resolution okay uh, it will give you wrong reading it doesn't mean like that so more is the precision better readings you can get right once you know how to measure it okay so the accuracy depends upon many things precision it's fixed okay precision is fixed right once you got the device the minimum reading it can take it is its least count and that is fixed but the accuracy accuracy depends upon what it depends of, upon the precision also okay like here i gave you an example length of the pen so meter scale is limited over here so if i take one year caliper maybe it can measure it can give you this 15.72 reading right so one year caliper if you measure it properly it will give you that reading so more precision is always a welcome okay but accuracy depends on precision and other things too it depends on the measurement technique okay it depends upon the uh, least sorry the zero error in the instrument right so it depends upon many things all right how to measure the errors okay the algebra of errors so absolute error the relative error and the percentage error so what is that so let's suppose okay i measure length of this pen let's say n time okay so let's say i don't know what is the true value of this uh, length of this pen so i take n measurements so l1 l2 l3 up to 
एल एन दीज आर माई एन मेजरमेंट फॉर लेंथ ऑफ अ पेन ओके देन वॉट डू आई डू टू फाइंड आउट दी मीन वैल्यू सॉरी ट्रू वैल्यू I don't know the true value. What I will do is, I will take all these readings, I mean, and I will find out the mean. Okay, so the true value will be close to what the mean value of these readings. Okay, so true value. If you don't know the, if you don't know about the true value of a quantity, so true value is closer to mean value. of many readings okay so let's say we are taking n readings so i will say n readings so let's suppose l suffix m is the mean value so how do we find mean add l1 plus l2 plus up to ln divided by n yes so add them all l1 plus l2 plus so on and so forth up to ln and divided by n okay so you get the mean value and now you can find out the error in each of these readings once you got the true value okay so error in the first reading how much will be that it will be l1 minus the mean value okay the difference between measured value and the true value is the error okay so now i can say that error in this reading are delta l1 is the error in the first measurement so it is l1 minus lm delta l2 is the error in the second measurement so it is l2 minus lm delta l3 is the sorry error in the third measurement so it is l3 minus lm so on and so forth up to delta lm ln is the error in the nth measurement so it is ln minus the mean value okay and after that you take the average of all of these errors and you get the mean error okay if you take the average of all these errors you will get what mean error right but we don't find mean error we find mean absolute error okay we find what the absolute error okay and what is that so we don't take error as it is we take the absolute value of that error and reason is because sometimes error would be positive sometimes it would be negative so let's say you take average of all of these so there are chances that you will end up getting zero right if yes, it is sir. sometimes positive sometimes negative and you add all errors so you take mean value so to take mean value you will have you will have to add them all and divide by the number of readings so sometimes it is positive sometimes it is negative so it will get cancelled out right but that doesn't mean that the average error in that quantity is zero okay see error is positive or negative it is an error so we have to take its absolute value if we want to find out the absolute error we have to take the average sorry the absolute value of the error okay so what do we do is we take the absolute value of this error okay so this is the error and the absolute error will be what the absolute value of delta l1 okay so absolute value of delta l2 so on and so forth these are the absolute errors in all the readings and then i can find out the mean of all of these absolute errors so i get mean absolute error so what will be mean absolute error it is i will say it is delta l suffix m m for mean and it's equal to what delta l1 absolute value of delta l1 plus absolute value of delta l2 plus so on and so forth up to plus delta l n 
divided by n okay got this is yes, um then i will find out relative error okay so next i will find out relative error so what is relative error relative error is the mean absolute error divided by the mean value of the quantity okay so it is defined as so relative error is equal to mean absolute error divided by mean value of the quantity so it's equal to delta lm divided by lm in this case and next i can find out the percentage error so percentage error percentage error is given by percentage of this okay so this is relative error multiplied by 100 this is equal to relative error multiplied by 100 so it is delta lm upon lm multiplied by 100 simple yes sir okay so now we'll see some problems but we'll see the problems at the end okay so before that let's see combination of errors so now we learnt about the errors now let's see what will be error of a sum or a difference of two quantities okay so if i take sum so let's say i have a quantity let's call it uh, c it's equal to a plus b okay so now c i measure a the measured value is suppose a dash so it will be somewhere between a minus delta a and a plus delta a so what is delta a it is the mean error in a right so let's say yes sir i have this absolute error delta lm and i measure length so measured value of this length will be what the mean value of the length minus delta m and mean value plus delta m okay so there will be some minimum limit some maximum limits minimum limit is what the mean value minus the mean absolute error maximum limit is mean value plus delta m okay so lm minus delta lm and lm plus delta lm so this is i can say this one is sorry this one is the minimum and this one is the maximum value so the measurement that i take it will be in between these two okay so l is the measurement let's say it will be in between this minimum value and maximum value so how do we write a measured value so measured value is suppose l i will write it as lm plus minus delta lm okay so here let's suppose i have two quantities a and b and the addition gives me this third quantity c so these are the true values of these quantities and now i take the measured value okay so let's say measured values measured values of a and b are a prime and b prime so a prime will be equal to a plus minus delta a so we are writing the true value plus minus the error and b plus minus delta b okay so b prime is equal to b plus minus delta b so then what will be measured value of c to c prime is equal to a plus minus delta a plus b plus minus delta b right and this measured value of c can be written as c plus minus delta c 
okay so it will be true value which is c plus minus the error in c and this error is in c we have to find out okay so this is equal to a plus minus delta a plus b plus minus delta b so now this c will get cancelled out with a plus b okay c will get cancelled out with a plus b so i get plus minus delta c plus minus delta c is equal to plus minus delta a plus minus delta b and here we get four cases okay which four cases do we get so what will be maximum and minimum error in this so we get these four cases so now what do we do is we take maximum of these cases why because we are interested in finding out what would be the maximum possible error in the measurement okay so we pick this one delta a plus minus delta b so we write c prime as c plus minus delta c and what will be that delta c so that delta c is equal to delta a plus minus delta b okay so as i said it doesn't matter whether error is positive or negative it is an error so we don't subtract errors okay we always add them because we need to find out what is the maximum possible error in the in the resultant quantity okay so we can write delta c is equal to what it's equal to delta a plus delta b so this is the error in addition of two quantities so now what will be error in the subtraction of these quantities so similarly it's also positive only it will be same because you can imagine this right in place of this positive sign i will take negative sign okay in place of the positive sign i will take negative sign so here i will take negative sign here also will be negative sign so instead of plus minus this will become minus plus okay if we have negative sign over here this will become minus plus but still there are four four cases right it will be plus of this and plus of this okay then plus of this minus of this minus of this plus of this and minus of this one and minus of this one okay still there are four cases and therefore the maximum error we have to pick maximum error of those four cases so we pick what delta a plus delta b so error in sum as well as difference is what sum of the errors in the two quantities got this then next let us see what happens to the error in case of product or portion okay so first one let's consider product so let's suppose c is equal to a multiplied by b all right so we can take uh, the measured values of a and b so measured values of a and b are a prime which is equal to a plus minus delta a and b prime which is equal to b plus minus delta b and therefore the measured value of c c prime can be written as a prime dot b prime and that's equal to a plus minus delta a multiplied by b plus minus delta b and this is equal to this is equal to what we can write it as a times b okay this term multiplied by this term a times b plus a times uh it will be plus minus right so it will be a multiplied by plus minus delta b so it is plus minus a times delta b then again we have this plus minus plus minus delta a times b so plus minus of delta a times b and plus minus plus minus so here we will have four cases 
Okay. So I will write only plus minus. So plus minus, it will be delta i multiplied by delta b. Okay. So we can write it at uh, plus minus because see we have plus multiplied by plus. It will give us plus. Plus multiplied by minus will give us minus. Minus multiplied by plus again will give us minus. And negative multiplied by negative. So again it will give positive. That is plus. Okay, so those four cases they are uh, reduced to what these two cases only. Okay, plus or minus, and the C can be written as what? It can be written as C prime can be written as C plus minus delta C. Okay, and now the C can be cancelled with A B. So I will cancel C with A B. Okay, so this thing and this thing gets cancelled out. So I get delta C equals to this. And now what I will do is I will divide the left hand side as well as the right hand side by C. Okay, so I will divide left hand side by C and right hand side by AB. All right, so dividing LHS LHS by C. And RHS by AB. What do I get? So I get plus minus delta C divided by C is equal to plus minus A times delta B. Sorry, A times delta B divided by AB plus minus delta A times B divided by AB plus minus delta a times delta b divided by ab okay and now you can see some things get cancelled out so this a and a gets cancelled out b and b gets cancelled out okay and what happens over here is i can write this as sorry uh, this thing is error multiplication of errors in numerator and multiplication of quantities in denominator so let's say error is 1%. Okay. Error in A is 1%. Error in B is also 1%. So what will be 1% multiplied by 1%? It is 1 by 100 multiplied by 1 by 100. It will be 1 by 10,000. Yes, sir. Right? So we it will be negligible. 1 by 10,000 is 0. Yes, 0. 0.000. Uh, yeah, 0 0.0001. Okay, so this is negligible and we can neglect this. So we expect the error to error to be very low, okay, very small, so that in comparison with the multiplication, the product of quantities, the product of errors would be very, very small. Okay, and that's why this product of errors divided by product of quantities, it will be a negligible value. So we neglect it. Okay, it will be a negligible term. All right. So what are we left with? So delta C upon C. So plus minus of delta C upon C is plus minus delta B upon B plus minus delta A upon A. And again, we pick the maximum value. So here again, there will be four cases. And out of those four cases, we'll pick the maximum value, right? Which is delta A upon A plus delta B upon B. We'll take plus sign over here as well as plus sign over here. It is delta A upon A plus delta B upon B. Okay. So, I will write it here in a box. So, what do I get? I get delta C upon C, which is the relative error in my resultant. So, relative error in the resultant is equal to sum of relative errors in the quantities. That is delta A upon A plus delta B upon B. Okay? Yes, sir. Any question? No, sir. All right. So what, no, will, happen? Sir. what will happen to the percentage error then? If the relative error in the resultant 
a sum of relative errors in the quantities. Okay, relative error in C is equal to relative error in A plus relative error in B. So what will happen to the percentage error? We have to multiply by 100. We have to multiply by 100 mm -hmm. everywhere. So I can equally say that percentage error in C because if I multiply everything by 100, I will get percentage error. So percentage error in C is equal to percentage error in A plus percentage error in B. Okay. Yes, sir. All right. After that, similar thing happens in case of quotient. So just um, pay attention to the calculation. Okay. So let's suppose now C is equal to A divided by B. So C prime will be equal to what? A prime upon B prime. All right. So A prime and B prime are measured value. So this is equal to A plus minus delta A. This is B plus minus delta B. Now what I will do is I will take A by B common from numerator and denominator. Okay. So can I do this? So I take A common from numerator and B common from denominator. All right. So I will divide this thing, this term by A. Okay. So if I take A common, so from this term, I am I, left with 1 only. So it is 1 plus minus. So here I don't have A. It will be delta A upon A. Right. And in denominator, I will have B 1 plus minus delta B upon B. Okay. And on right hand side, I have C plus minus delta C upon C. And what is this A divided by B? So A upon B is equal to C. So I can write C. this as C and I can take it on left hand side. Okay. I can take it on left hand side. So it goes into the denominator. Oh, I wrote delta C by C over here. I'm sorry. I can write this as C. I can take it in denominator. Okay. So what can I write? C plus minus delta C and this A upon B can be written as C. This is C. So it's in multiplication on the right hand side. So if I take it on the other side, it goes in denominator. So it goes in denominator like this. So on right hand side, I'm left with A, sorry, 1 plus minus delta A upon A. And in denominator, 1 plus minus delta B. delta b divided by b and now what i will do is i will multiply and divide by minus plus okay here i have plus minus i will multiply and divide by minus plus of one so i will multiply and divide by one minus plus delta b upon b okay for what so i will tell you So let me do it here. So C plus minus delta C upon C. I get, if I divide by this C, I will get 1 over here. So it is 1 plus minus delta C upon C and that's equal to. On right hand side, I can write 1 plus minus delta A upon A in numerator. And in denominator 1 plus minus delta b upon b and as i said what i'm going to do is i will multiply and divide by 1 minus plus delta b upon b 1 minus plus delta b upon b so what do you get see we know a plus b multiplied by a minus b is you know this a plus b multiplied by a minus b is a square minus b square a square minus b square right so here when i have plus sign okay so here i will have minus sign 
okay so i am multiplying with conjugate right so conjugate of 1 plus minus delta b upon b is 1 minus plus so if this is plus i am multiplying with minus okay if this is minus if i have minus sign in this term i am multiplying with the conjugate so with the term which has positive sign okay so the multiplication of this will give me what it will give me 1 minus delta b upon b square yes no yes sir okay are you so do you agree with this yes sir so what i am doing is yes, sir. what i am saying is i will multiply by conjugate every time so if i have positive sign over here i will multiply with what 1 minus delta b upon b if i have negative sign i will multiply with 1 plus delta b upon b okay so i am multiplying and dividing by conjugate so i do get what i get 1 minus delta b divided by b square in the denominator okay and what do i get in the numerator so in numerator we have to do the multiplication so it is 1 multiplied by 1 will give me 1 so it is 1 okay then i have plus minus uh, 1 minus plus delta b upon b so 1 multiplied by that thing will give me minus plus delta b upon b so minus plus delta b divided by b then i have plus minus delta a upon a multiplied by this one so it gives me plus minus of delta a upon a and then this thing multiplied by this thing so delta a upon a multiplied by delta b upon b okay so i will write it as plus minus delta a upon a multiplied by delta b upon b and as we did earlier that this thing is multiplication of the errors and this thing is multiplication of quantities okay so multiplication of errors by multiplication of quantities we can neglect neglect okay because errors will be very small compared to the quantities so the numerator is very small compared to the denominator so i am going to neglect this and on the same foot, I can neglect this too. Okay. So, by same argument, I can neglect this one also. How? This is delta B multiplied by B, uh, sorry, delta B multiplied by delta B in the numerator, and in the denominator, it is B multiplied by B. Or let's say delta B by B. So, error is, let's say, 1% of B. Okay. This is just an example. So, we are going to consider that errors are very small okay so this thing will be then 1 by 100 and we have square of that so it will be 1 by 100 square so it will be 1 by 1 divided by 10,000 so it is very very small so I am going to neglect this one also got this yes sir so my denominator becomes 1 okay it is almost 1 and then what I can do is see on left hand side I have this term and right and sorry on right hand side i have this term so i have 1 plus minus delta c upon c and here i have 1 minus plus delta b upon b plus minus delta a upon a so this one and this one can be cancelled out so we can write that plus minus plus minus of delta c upon c is equal to minus plus of delta b upon b plus minus of delta a upon a and again we will get four cases out of those four cases we will take the maximum case because we are interested in finding out the maximum possible error and that is why what do I get I get the error in the resultant of division of two quantities a and b is also the relative error in the resultant is equal to sum of the relative errors in the two quantities so delta a upon a plus delta b upon b so in case of a product or a division what's the 
resultant error so relative error in the resultant is equal to sum of relative errors in the quantities got this yes sir okay and yes or no lavanya yes sir okay good so then next we'll see error in a quantity raised to a power okay and for that let's say b is equal to a square so this can be written as a times a and as i found over here that if i have multiplication of two terms okay multiplication of two quantities then what happens to the error so error in the resultant the relative error in the resultant is sum of relative errors in those two quantities okay so here i can say my two quantities are a and a itself so what can i say over here is the relative error in b is equal to relative error in a plus relative error in a okay so it is equal to two times the relative error in a okay okay sir and if b is equal to a cube then i can say delta b upon b will be how much 3 3, three into delta a by a 3 into delta a upon a 3 multiplied by delta a divided by a and if b is equal to a raised to n then n into delta a by a n into delta a by a okay so this is simple <clears throat> and then we will take a general term so let's say let's say uh, z is equal to a to the power n b to the power m c to the power p and d to the power q so now can you say what will be delta z upon z delta z by z n n into delta a by a plus m into delta b by b plus p into delta c by c plus q into delta d by q correct okay so we'll take addition everywhere because we want to find out maximum error okay so delta z upon z or delta z by z whatever you say so it is n times delta a upon a plus m times delta b upon b plus p times delta c upon c sorry p times delta c upon c plus q times delta d upon d okay so this is the general formula and most of the times there are questions based upon this formula on errors okay and what happens to the percentage error just multiply by 100 everywhere so percentage error in z is equal to n times percentage error in a plus m times percentage error in b plus p times percent percentage error in c and plus q times percentage error in d okay and there is one more thing the last thing before we solve some problems and that is the significant figures so what are the significant figures so when we take some measurement we take some measurement let's say i measure length of this pen okay so i had said length of the pen is equal to let's say 15.72 centimeters so in this reading there are four digits and you will be certain about the first three digit and you will not be so sure about the last digit okay so these readings see these first three readings sorry digits you are certain about them so this reading reading up to this point it is reliable up to this digit it's reliable but this two can be two five or something okay there can be five or something afterwards so this two can be three or it can be one or it can be two so you are not certain about this digit so this is this is called as error digit or error bit okay 
so what are the significant figures in a measurement so all the digits that you are certain about all the re reliable reading sorry reliable digits and the first uncertain digit so these four digits then will be the significant figures of my measurement got it yes sir what are significant figures all the digits that you are certain about plus first uncertain digit so this can be two this can be one this can be three i am not so certain i am not so sure okay so this will make my significant figures okay so there are some rules to find out the significant figures in a measurement what are those rules so uh there is long list of rules so basically let's say uh, all non zero digits are significant okay if there is no zero all non zero digits are significant so now suppose i write this reading as 157200 cm okay so now how many significant digits are there four is it four or what is it so in this reading yes lavanya can you guess six sir it is six the reason is when i write after the decimal point if i write n number of digits so what does that signify it signifies the resolution of my instrument okay it signifies what resolution of my instrument so the zeros after decimal point they are significant okay zeros after decimal point are significant okay so now if i write this as like this now how many significant digits will be there six still there are six significant digits because these two zeros they don't have any meaning okay they don't tell you anything about the instrument or your measurement also okay you can put as many zeros as you want before a number and that doesn't mean that doesn't add anything to the measurement okay so the uh, all the zeros before your first non zero digit they are insignificant not significant okay if there is no decimal point involved all right but if you have a decimal point if you have decimal point then we talked about these zeros so zeros after these non zero digits the trailing zeros they are called they are significant okay but let's say i write like this so 15.07 what about this zero this zero is significant okay so any zeros between two non zero digits are significant and let's say i write 0.07 so how many significant digits are there one okay okay sir so you got the rules see all the non zero digits are significant okay all the non zero digits are significant that's your first rule then all zeros between two non zero digits are significant so if you have two non zero digits and you have n zeros in between them so those zeros will be significant okay so that is first rule about zeros then all zeros before the first non zero digit are not significant so all zeros before the first non zero digit are not significant okay so i had written some zeros over here okay so then terminal zeros in the number without decimal point are not significant and in a number with decimal point they are significant okay so terminal zeros in number without decimal point so if you don't have any decimal point then the terminal zeros will not be significant so let's say i write 15700 so these these zeros are not significant 
if I don't have a decimal point. And if I have a decimal point, then what happens? So if I have a decimal point and I have terminal zeros, then they are significant. Okay, so these are the rules. So now let's see some examples. So taking into account the significant figures, what is the value of 9.99 minus 0 0.0099 meters? This is from your NEET 2020. So let's do the subtraction. So I have 9.99 and I have to subtract 0 0.0099 from that. So what will be the result? It will be 1, I guess 1, 1 and 8 over here, 9, this thing. Am I right? Right or wrong? 9.9801 I think. 9, okay, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it will be 98. Oh, yeah, it, this is 99. Okay, so I will take uh, 1 from here. It will be 100 minus 99. Okay, 0, 1. Right. So, I got this. Okay. So now, what will be the, what will be this subtraction? Okay, what is the value of this thing? So, is it 0 0.9801, this one? Is this the answer? 9.98. What will be the answer? 9.98? Yes, sir. And why do you think so? Yes, Lavanya? Sir, in addition and subtraction, we want to take the least significant uh, right. number. Least significant digits. Okay, least significant number. And why is that? Because you have one instrument, okay, which has less resolution. The another instrument has more resolution. Okay, so this one will be less accurate. This one will be more accurate. Okay, so what do we do is we round it off to the least resolution, not significant digits. Least decimal point, I think. Not uh, least decimal point. Okay, you can say that way. Yeah, that is correct too. So what we what we do is we round it off to the least resolution. Yes, sir. If you say that way, it's correct too. But what we do is what does it mean? It means that this is less resolved instrument. This is more resolved. Okay. So precision of this instrument is more. Precision of this instrument is less. So, when we do the addition or subtraction or any mathematical operation, we reduce the reading to what? The least precision. Okay. So, that's what we do. So, here we uh, stick with the precision of this, this reading, first reading. Okay. So, this is precise up to the second digit after the decimal point. So, your result will be precise up to what? Second digit after the decimal point only. Okay. Not beyond that. So we reduce it up to that. So the reading will be 9.98. Okay, the answer will be 9.98. All right, so this was very simple. Right? Yes, no? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. So let's let's see this one. So this is not from me, this is from some other exam. This is just to check whether we know about the significant digits or not. The number of significant figures in this number and this number are respectively. So tell me. Five and seven. Is it five and seven or something else? Yes. Five and seven. Okay. Because these zeros, they give us information about the resolution. So they are significant. Okay, so here it's 5 and here it's 7. 5 and 7 is the correct answer. Okay, now next one. The period of oscillation of simple pendulum in the experiment is recorded as this thing. This is first reading, second reading, third reading, fourth and fifth reading. 
the average absolute error is okay so this is just a calculation and there is similar problem in our ncrt also okay so let's find out what do we want to find out average absolute error okay so it is very simple what is the mean value first of all let's find out mean value so this is period of simple pendulum so let's take t1 t2 t3 t4 and t5 okay so t mean will be equal to what the mean of these reading so 2.3 plus 2.56 plus 2.42 plus 2.71 plus 2.80 divided by 5 okay so can can i do something fast so 2.80 2.71 all right so this is 2.8 2.6 13.12 oh you calculated yes sir 13 point 12 12 divided by 5 okay and what will be the division then it will be 2. Point, how much 2.6 okay 6 the uh, then okay, 604 is that correct 2.624 i think 2.624 okay let us do that 13.12 divided by 5 so 5 to the 10 3.1 then 56 up okay this is after decimal point 30 okay then i have one <clears throat> this two five two zar right five two zar 10 then two zero yes five two zar right right so 26 point sorry 2.624 okay so this is my reading so now what do i want the average absolute error okay so this is just uh, playing the calculation okay so what will be that so it is t1 minus this thing tm so 2.63 minus 2.6 okay it is 624 so we have to round it off okay 2.62 it will be 2.62 all right So this is 0.01. Okay, T2 minus Tm will be what? 2.656 minus 2.62. But we want to take its absolute value. So how much? 0.06. In third reading, how much is that? 2.42. 2.42. 0.42. Okay, so this is delta T three, delta T four. Zero point zero nine. Zero point zero nine. So seven one minus six two. Yes, zero point zero nine. And delta T five. Zero point one eight. Zero point one eight. Okay, so if we add all of them. So this is 0.01 plus 0.06 is 0.07. 0.07 plus 0.09 will give me what? 0.16. 16 plus 18 will give me 0.34. 0.34 plus 0.20 will give me 0.54. And 0.54 divided by 5. What will be that? It's close to this one, right? So this is the answer. So labor is question. Okay. Anyways. so sometimes these kind of questions are asked so uh when you see them first stay away right okay sir stay away for uh, let's say for some time the other questions and then come back okay so there is nothing in this question right just calculations okay next question if voltage Uh, v equals to 10 plus minus 5, and current is 10 plus minus 0.2 amperes. The percentage error in resistance is. So how do we find? We know V is equal to R I. So R equals to V upon I, and this is division of 
two quantities. So we know the formula. The percentage error in R is equal to percentage error in V plus, plus percentage error in I. percentage error in I. So that is delta V upon V. So this is delta V, right? This is delta V, and this is V. Okay, this is the mean absolute value error, and this is the mean value of the quantity. So it is five divided by hundred multiplied by hundred. So that gets cancelled out. So it is five plus delta i upon i. So this is point two divided by ten. Okay, so point two divided by ten multiplied by hundred. So this hundred divided by ten gives me ten. Ten multiplied by point two is two. So this is two and this is five. Seven percent. Seven percent. Okay. So seven percent is the answer. All right. Next question. You measure two quantities. Is this thing one point zero plus minus zero point two, and B is two point zero plus minus zero point two meters? We should report. Correct value for root AB. All right. So we want to find out correct value of root AB. So let's find out root AB first. So let's say C is equal to root AB. What is that? It will be equal to 1.0 multiplied by 2.0. Okay. So 1 multiplied by 2 basically is 2. 2.00. And what is square root of two? I told you to memorize it. One point. One point four one four. One point four one four. One point four one four. But here our readings are precise up to what? One digit after the decimal point. So the resultant cannot be uh, more precise. Okay, so it can be precise up to this point only. So we have to ra round it off till this point. Okay. Yes, sir. So it is one point four one. Okay, so rounding off will give me one point four. So I got C, and now this is C is equal to square root of A B, or you can say it is A to the power half multiplied by B to the power half. Okay. So what will be delta C upon C? It is equal to half of Delta A upon A, uh, sorry, plus half of delta B upon B, right? Because what is what is C? C is equal to A raised to half square root of A multiplied by square root of B. Okay, so here we are having A raised to something, A raised to n multiplied by B raised to m. So it is n multiplied by delta A upon A plus M multiplied by delta B upon B. Okay. So now let's substitute the values. So what is this? Delta A is point two. So it is point two. So this will be equal to how much? So this point two and two will get cancelled out. So it is point one upon one. So it is zero point zero one. Right. Point one divided by one. 0.01, and this will be 0.1 divided by 2. So it will be how much? 0.1 divided by 2, 0.005. Is it correct? Or let's make the denominator same. So this is equal to. Okay. So this is equal to. I can say 2 divided by 10, or 2. Let's cancel out. So this is 1 upon 10 plus. This is how much? Uh, this is 0.1, 0.1 divided by 2. So I will multiply by 5. Okay, so 0.1 multiplied by 5 will be 0.5, 0.5 divided by 10. Or if I want to make it 20, it will be 1 divided by 20. So now this is delta C upon C, and I want to find what. We should report correct value of delta uh, square root of AB. So I want to find out delta C. Okay. So 
you can take c on the other side but before that you can write this as 3 divided by 20 right this will be 2 upon 20 1 by 10 is 2 upon 20 okay and this is 1 by 20 so 3 upon 20 is delta c divided by c take c on the other side so delta c equals to 3 upon 20 multiplied by c so how much is that 1. 1.4 okay so this thing 1.4 multiplied by 3 is how much 5.2 i guess oh 4.2 divided by 20 how much it is 2.1 uh, 0 0.21 okay so this is 0 0.21 and we'll round it off up to the one digit after the decimal point. So it will be 0 0.2. Option D. Yeah, option D is the answer. Right. So option D is the answer. So you got what to do here? Yes, sir. Okay, so here we are doing two things. First, we are using this thing. Okay. Uh, what if we have multiplication of power of two quantities then the power comes in multiplication then the relative error in the resultant is equal to what that power times relative error in first quantity plus power of the second quantity which is half over here plus power of the second quantity multiplied by relative error in the second quantity okay and we are also doing significant figures okay so this one is significant so this is significant up to what one digit after the decimal point so resultant is also uh, significant up to what one digit after the decimal point okay so we are doing two things and in error also it is 0 0.21 we are round it, rounding it off up to one digit after the decimal point okay we are doing two things for here. right okay so let's see next question so calculate the mean percentage error in five observations okay 80.0 80.5 80.0 81.5 and 82 so calculate the mean percentage error so now this is the error digit okay the last digit is error digit okay and this should be oh no this is there is some print mistake so can i say this is 82.0 it will not match them if it is not that okay so 80 okay let's take it as 82.0 all right so how to do this kind of problem that's what we'll see okay maybe that there is print mistake we don't know what the digit is so how to do it so here we have 80.0, 80.5, 81.0, and 82, 81.5 and 82.0. So what should we do? Tell me. So these are five observations. Let's say A1, A2, A3, A4, A5. So A M, A mean is equal to 80.0 plus 80.5 plus 81.0 plus 81.5 plus 82.0. 0 divided by 5. So we have 80, 80, okay, this is 80.5 plus 1, 1.5 and 2. So 0 0.5 plus 1 plus 1.5 plus 2. 405.0. 4 not? 1.5 so plus 0.5 is uh, 2, 2 plus 1 is 3, 3 plus 2 is? Oh, 5 yeah 405 divided by 5 okay so it will be so it will be 81.0 okay so this is my mean after that my calculations are i mean i don't tend to calculate it very carefully okay so but you have to do all right yes sir so yes so next thing we have to find out error in all five readings. So what will be that? 81 minus 80. So in first one it is 1. 
So in second one, it is 0.5. So 1 plus 1 is 2, 2 plus 1 is 3. Okay, so 3 divided by, so this will be 3 divided by 5. How much? 0 0.6. 0 0.6. Okay. So the reading can be written as what? 81.0 plus minus 0 0.6. Okay, and mean percentage error, we have to find out. So how much will be percentage error? What to do? So 0 0.6 divided, divided by, by 81 multiplied by 100. Okay, so this is the error. Okay, this is delta A, this is A. So percentage error is delta A upon A multiplied by 100. 0 0.6 divided by 81 multiplied by 100. So, yes, 9 nines are 81. Okay, so 27, right, 27 threes are 81, and this will be 0 0.2 times. Okay, so 0 0.2 multiplied by 100 is how much? Uh, 20, 20 divided by 27. Okay, 20 divided by 27. So it will be close to, I guess, this first answer. Yes, so. Next one. So these are the problems. Okay. So these are the problems that you should do. You should go for them. Okay. So these were from some other exam. So neat problems, you can see. These are simple. In an experiment, percentage error occurred in measurement of physical quantities. A, B, C, and D are these 1, 2, 3, 4 respectively. Then the maximum percentage error of uh, in the measurement of X, X is this thing will be. So this is very straightforward. What is the answer? Delta X upon X multiplied by 100 equals to 2 times 2 times delta A upon A multiplied by 100 plus half of delta B upon B multiplied by 100 plus one third of delta C upon C multiplied by 100 plus 3 delta D upon D multiplied by 100. So let's substitute that. It is 2 multiplied by 1 plus, okay, this thing is 1%, right? Plus uh, half multiplied by 2 plus 1 by 3 multiplied by 3 plus 3 into 4 3 multiplied by 4 so it is 12 plus 16. 1 plus 1 that is 14 plus 2 16 right so 16 is the answer okay so these kind of problems they come very often okay and they are very simple all right next question so this is from this is a dated one okay but see this is from 1996 ai pmt okay the density of a cube is measured by measuring its mass and length of its side we know this if the maximum error in the measurement of mass and length are 3% and 2% respectively the maximum error in the measurement of density would be what to do Density is mass upon volume and it's a cube. So it is mass upon L raised to 3. three. And therefore percentage error in density. Okay, so percentage error in density. So delta rho upon rho multiplied by 100 is equal to percentage error in mass plus 3 times percentage error in length. So this is 3%, this is 2%. So 3% plus 3 times 2%. So this is 6% plus 3%, 9%. Okay. So again, I did the same thing because I am writing and explaining it. But if you are sitting in an exam, so just see this formula is M upon L cube. So what will happen to the percentage errors? So percentage error in M 
plus 3 times percentage error in L. So, percentage error in M is 3, percentage error in uh, L is 2, that is 3 plus 3 times 2. Okay, 3 plus 6, 9. Right? No need to write down all the steps. So, this will come with practice. All right. So, this is simple. Again, this is from the NEAT and it's similar one. So, in an experiment, 4.3. See, I, I told that these kind of problem, problems are repeated. So, the questions on errors are like this only most of the times. Okay. So, these are three marks in my opinion. 14 percentage. Okay. You calculated it? So, it is 1 percent, 2 percent, 3 percent and 4 percent. So, 3 times 1 is uh, 3. Then, 2 times 2 is 4. So, 3 plus 4. Then, you have in denominator 1, 1 only. So, plus 3 plus 4. So, plus 3 plus 4. Okay. So, 6 plus 8 is 14 percentage. Right. Correct. Good. So, this is from JE. Okay, but it is similar. The relative uncertainty in the period of satellite orbiting around the earth is 10 raised to minus 2. Okay, relative uncertainty in the satellite orbiting around the earth is 10 raised to minus 2. If the relative uncertainty in the radius of orbit is negligible, the relative uncertainty in the mass of the satellite is. So, here you need to know the formula. Okay, so you have period of satellite, then radius, okay, radius of orbit and you have mass of earth. So, what is the formula? Okay, so formula is T is equal to 2 pi multiplied by square root of R cube upon Gm. This is the formula, right? So, what they are saying, okay, let's take square. So, T square will be equal to what? 4 pi square multiplied by r cube divided by gm. And given is that relative uncertainty in the period of satellite is 10 raised to minus 2. Oh, there is some lag in this one. All right. So, relative uncertainty in the period of satellite is 10 raised to minus 2. Okay. That means delta t divided by t is equal to what? 10 raised to minus 2. Okay. Then relative uncertainty in radius of orbit, this r is negligible. We can neglect that. Okay. The relative uncertainty in the mass, this we have to find out. Delta m upon m is what we have to find out. So I can modify this formula. I can write m is equal to 4 pi square into r cube divided by t square. Yes, sir. Okay. So, then what do I get? <coughs> I am sorry. <coughs> so, delta m upon m. Everything else, since there is no uncertainty in r, there is only uncertainty in t. So, I can say that delta m divided by m is equal to what? 2 times delta t divided by t. Okay. So, it is 2 times delta t divided by so, it is 2 multiplied by t raised to minus 2. Right. So, yes, simple. Sir. Okay. Understood. Yes, sir. Lavanya. Yes, sir. Okay. You are not replying at all. All right. So, this is simple. This was asked in JE. But this is a simple problem. So, it can be problem like this can be asked in NEET also. Okay. So, okay. Uh, yes, we need to know this formula. So, if we know the formula, the problem is solved. Right. Next one. The density of a material in shape of a cube is determined by measuring three sides of cube and its mass. If the relative errors in measuring the mass and length respectively are these, maximum error in density is repetitive problem. 
but this is from three. Four. Points. How much? Four point five percent. Mass it is one point five. Okay, so density is mass upon L cube, mass upon volume. So it is percentage error in mass plus three times percentage error in length. So percentage error in mass is one point five, and percentage error in length is one. So it is one point five plus one multiplied by sorry three multiplied by one. So it is four point five percent. Correct. Let's go to the next problem. The percentage errors in the measurement of mass and speed are two percent, three percent respectively. The error in estimate of kinetic energy will be. So kinetic energy is half of mv square. Mv square. So eight percent. Eight percent. Okay. So percentage error in mass multiplied by two times the percentage error in v is percentage error in kinetic energy. So delta. A percentage error in ke is equal to percentage error takes so much time to write it right in mass plus two times the percentage error in the speed. So this is two percent plus two times two multiplied by three percent. So Six percent plus two percent, eight percent is the answer, right? Now also video is lagging, sir. So now also it is lagging. So I will yes, repeat and come back. I'm sorry.